Hare Krishna everyone. So welcome. So actually we are uh, uh, reading Bhagavad Gita uh, chapter 1 and we are in the almost last section of the Bhagavad Gita chapter 1. Okay. The first chapter is Arjuna Vishada Yoga. So basically in this chapter Arjuna is uh, you know lamenting for the situation that he is undergoing. He is actually in the battlefield and he has seen all his relatives in the battlefield and after seeing all his relatives then he is uh, bewildered basically then he thought uh, uh, you know there are uh, uh, he has exhibited some bodily symptoms right he has exhibited some body, bodily symptoms it's more or less a person who is in depression right so such symptoms uh, he has expressed uh, being a great warrior and the hopes uh, of winning for Pandavas is completely dependent on Arjuna. Arjuna has exhibited such symptoms. Um, it's really, you know, uh, concern situation, basically. So now, uh, after expressing those symptoms, uh, you know, the symptoms are like, you know, some, some of the symptoms like, you know, he was sweating, he's uh, shivering. And he could not able to hold the Gandiva bow and he could not able to stand. He is just falling down on the chariot. Okay. So for a warrior, leaving the Gandiva bow is, uh, you know, uh, is something that is, you know, uh, greatly we should uh, think of. So in that situation, Arjuna was uh, saying that, no, I don't want to fight. Arjuna was uh, expressing that, no, I don't want to fight. So actually the whole situation has come you know, all the way both the side warriors have come and then stood in, in uh, you know in front of each other in the battlefield and now arjuna is saying that i don't want to fight and arjuna is not blindly saying that i don't want to fight he is giving an arguments also for not fighting um it means arjuna has a great intelligence but the problem is arjuna is thinking at a bodily platform that was the reason he has given some reasons um it's not that you know he is simply uh, saying uh, without any logic for why he does not want to fight he has given some reasons we have seen three reasons right three reasons we have seen the first reason is uh, compassion and the first reason that uh, he mentioned was compassion why compassion is because uh, Arjuna said, uh, "All are my relatives. Okay, all are my, you know, people, well-wishers, friends. If I kill them, how can I live? Okay, this is the concern that he has expressed. He does not want to kill his relatives, his family men. So that is the compassion he has. Being a devotee of a Krishna, expressing such compassion is just normal. Okay." So, uh, in the same way, Arjuna also expressed the compassion. And the second uh, reason that uh, Arjuna mentioned was uh, no enjoyment. Uh, basically, we all, you know, try to achieve something in our, uh, you know, day-to-day -day life. And uh, when will we get enjoyment? When we show what we achieve to others. Right? If we don't show to others, then we don't even try for achieving something. Because it will not give you that kick you know, that you get when you when others appreciate you or others look at you and uh, you you get noticed in the among other people, right? So, for example, uh, we buy a car, we buy a house. What do we do? We take a picture of it and post it in the WhatsApp status and Facebook status and show it to others, right? Why are we? you know, uh, taking a pictures and posting in the status, it is just to show others, right? Otherwise, what is the point? It is just to show others. That means we get enjoyment by showing to others. By showing to others. Even why we do housewarming functions, right? We buy a house and we uh, perform a housewarming function. Why? Why is it required? Whom we, whom we call in the housewarming functions, we call our family members, our friends, our well-wishers, everybody we call, right? Okay, we call, the purpose of the housewarming function is to show them that I bought this house, right? This is uh, when we get enjoyment, 
we feel happy in doing such uh, you know ceremonies such uh, celebrations we celebrate we celebrate every achievement unless you celebrate the achievement you don't get enjoyment let's say in this battlefield pandavas win pandavas uh, get the kingdom but after getting the kingdom who will be remaining to see the victory all his well wishers will die by then all his family people will die by then all his relatives will by die by then then who will be there to show if i cannot show my victory to anybody then what enjoyment i will get there is no enjoyment this is what arjuna was thinking that's why he is saying there is no enjoyment in this victory okay and the third reason he was mentioning is a sinful reactions okay the uh, see killing is a sinful act killing is a sinful act and moreover he is going to kill the people like bhishma drona and uh, all his brothers especially bhishma and drona are worshipable people for arjuna so for a for a worshipable people uh, he has to go and worship them rather he is going to kill them so this is a sinful act uh for that matter killing anything is a sinful activity uh, so being a devotee of krishna arjuna is thinking that if i kill so many people in this battlefield i might get sinful reactions okay this is a, another reason he has expressed and today we are going to see the fourth reason destruction of the family traditions so we will actually there are total four verses mentioned in the family destruction uh, the destruction of the family traditions uh, 39 40 41 42 43 these are the five verses talked about uh, family destruction okay let me uh, shloka recitation is not required we will read the translation so in the th- verse number 39 uh, krishna uh, sorry arjuna was talking okay Uh, anybody read prabhu the religion okay with the destruction of the dynasty the eternal family tradition is vanquished vanquished and thus rest of the family becomes involved in irreligion okay second 40 shloka number 40 anybody else Okay, so the first verse talks about uh, two reasons, two two effects of uh, you know family destruction. Uh, what he is saying is, eternal family traditions is vanquished. There are no traditions after killing everybody. All elders will die. there is nobody remaining so when that okay i will go to the explanation later so the second reason that he is telling is irreligion is developed irreligion increases irreligion increases mm-hmm. and in the 40 shloka uh, he is talking about two more reasons what are the two more reasons because the irreligion irreligion is prominent in the family women in the family are polluted okay women in the family are polluted if the women are polluted if the women are degraded then what happens unwanted progeny develops okay unwanted progeny comes these are the two more effects of killing all the people in the family if i go and kill everybody because if you see in kurukshetra almost all those people who are you know uh, at a certain age more than certain age uh, those who can fight everybody came everybody if if arjuna has to win he has to kill everybody if everybody is killed then there is no one left then they, they, they then no one left okay so in that way if you see okay so if if elders everybody die then what happens there is no one to tell about the traditions to the next generation okay so that way um uh, 
and cyst what is that 40 right so unwanted progeny starts uh, because of that the unwanted progeny starts and the women will will be polluted and then unwanted progeny starts then the 41 uh, probably anybody else yeah. So here there are two more reasons uh, Arjuna is telling here. Because of the unwanted population, because of the unwanted population growing, what happens? A people who are committing a sin, like you know, destructing the family traditions. Those who destruct the family tradition will also go to the hell, and those uh, family members also will go to the hell. Okay, because the, all those rituals. I will talk about the all these things. Uh, then what happens? The ancestors will not be delivered. The ancestors will not be delivered. Why the ancestors will not be delivered? If you don't follow the rituals like pinda uh, offerings and water offering every year we do right for the our ancestors if you stop that what will happen they will not be delivered they will remain as a bhuta or preta in some uh, bhuta world or they may come back to any heli, uh, uh, maybe some animal life somewhere they will go so they should be delivered for that we have to offer pinda if uh, uh, people are not aware of these formalities then what will happen they will not offer if they don't offer our ancestors will never be delivered so that is one thing then next 42 Matajis, anybody? Yeah. So basically, because of this such an unwanted uh, uh, population, uh, okay, ancestors and everybody, family members, everybody will go to hell. And uh, and then what happens because of such evil deeds? That means there is no tradition, there is no religion followed in the family. Nobody follows in the family. Then what happens? The family, uh, those who destroy the family tradition and thus give rise to unwanted children, and all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated. Okay, because of this unwanted population. Okay. So there is no welfare. There is so they all do all you know wrong activities. Okay, uh, society will not accept them. Such people will be coming. Uh, with examples, we'll try to understand this. Then the last verse for this concept is forty-three. Uh, Mataji, anybody? Yeah, the last reason he is telling, basically, if it all this happens, if it all this happens, the whole family, everybody will go to hell. This I heard from the disciplic succession. This is not something that I am telling uh, on my own. Uh, Arjuna has already heard it from his uh, uh, his masters, his gurus. Okay, so let's try to understand this. Uh, what Arjuna is talking about in a so basically, if you see, uh, killing people for the sake of getting the victory, okay. Arjuna is now standing in the battlefield and he wanted to kill all the people. That was the purpose he was standing. So he is actually visualizing everything what is going to happen. What will happen? I may get victory, but when I kill everybody, there is no elder remaining in the family. Because everybody, because uh, from the uh, from the Hastinapura and uh, even from the Pandava side and the Kaurava side, all the all the families, all everybody except ladies, everybody else were there in the battlefield. Okay, and it is known that everybody will die, both the sides, Pandava side and Kaurava side. Everybody will die. If everybody dies, who will be there to tell the rituals to next generation? Okay, people will not be aware of what is good, what is bad, because we all know our samskaras from our elders, right? So, our mother, father, our grandfather, they tell us, this is how you have to do. Okay, uh, for example, 
uh, a, a baby born okay there is some rituals that we need to do uh, some rituals we do and we buy a house we do some rituals and we marry we do some rituals even for garbhadana we do some rituals there are so many such rituals that happens if you perform those rituals for every occasion that we are doing only then uh, you know it is good for the family and uh, these things the effect of this is told in all five shlokas here if you don't do that what is going to happen it is explained in all these five verses okay so uh, this is a major problem and arjuna is thinking i will become the reason for all this because if i kill all this is going to happen so that's why he is talking in the next verses a person who is destroying these traditions will also go to hell that means i will also go to hell that's why i don't want such you know sinful activity to be done by me so that you know i will you know enter into the hellish planets which i don't want to do that's why destruction of the dynasty is uh, you know uh, is a dangerous thing that he is thinking so the family traditions we have spoken like um, uh, there are so many dharmas right kula dharma jati dharma there are so many dharmas so kula dharma when it comes here the kula actually if you see in the uh, in this verse uh, the 39 verse eternal family tradition is vanquished vanquished eternal family tradition it's not sanatana dharma it's not sanatana dharma this is all about varnashrama dharma he is talking sanatana dharma is different from varnashrama dharma okay uh, sanatana dharma means it is eternal eternal means it was there in the past it was there when the universe started and it was it is there now and it will remain there even in future and that dharma is not going to be vanquished well nobody can do that because that is eternal the eternal dharma is that you know surrendering to krishna and uh, you know un- unconditional devotional service to the krishna is an eternal dharma that we need to do that nobody can kill but the problem here is um the dharma that arjuna is talking is the varnashrama dharma in varnashrama there are four varnas right uh, brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra these are the four varnas these are not the caste these are not kul these are the these are not caste these are the varnas these varnas are coming based on the guna and based on the karma based on the actions that we perform and based on the uh you know influence of the gunas influence of the mores on us these varnas are defined that's why the varna brahmana or maybe kshatriya is not because of the birth that we take if i take a birth in a brahmana family it's not necessary that i become a brahmana it's all it's like you know a lawyer son cannot become a lawyer a doctor son cannot become a doctor unless they get the qualification to become a doctor or a lawyer so in the same way brahmana is also in the same way kshatriya is also these are not kulas these are based on the activities they perform and the based on the modes of influence they have okay a brahmana has certain responsibilities in this society a kshatriya has certain responsibilities in this society a vaishya and shudra also have certain responsibilities in this society and everybody have to perform their activities and they have to fulfill their responsibilities so that this society will be balanced otherwise imbalance in the society and that will lead for uh, you know destruction okay so this uh, who will tell being a brahmana you have to read vedas you have to you know uh, you have to suggest even the kings of uh, you know kingdom like how to rule the kings should have uh, you know uh, people like brahmanas to suggest if the brahmanas don't suggest as per the vedas or as per the scriptures then the kings rule kings will rule like how they want for their own satisfaction sense gratification they will rule actually the taxes are collected for the welfare but what will they do they will collect the taxes and put it in their pocket and they will enjoy they think this is my own money they think this is my own asset okay whatever kings should not think in that way so how do kings know what is their responsibility is uh is only possible when uh, brahmanas suggest them 
then the kings rule as per vedas and the vedas are the instructions from god so kings will rule as per the god's instructions if brahmanas are there in the society if brahmanas are not there in the society and the kings will become sinful and the kings will rule and the people who are being ruled by such kings will also become sinful okay the whole society becomes sin sinful so we have to avoid that for that the kshatriya should know how to rule brahmana should know uh, scriptures brahmana should know vedas if that is uh, not there then the whole traditions will be distracted and the family traditions will stop so that's why that is called uh, you know uh, dharma that he is talking then and there are some dharmas called ashrama dharma ashrama dharma means uh, there are uh, uh, brahmacharya ashrama prahasta ashrama and uh, vana prastha ashrama and sanyasa ashrama so being a brahmachari there are certain way of living okay so you have to be involved more in knowing the uh, you know scriptures educate ourselves we should be not we should be acquiring the knowledge in that we should not be involving in such activities which grahastha involves Uh, being a brahmachari he has to focus only in the education and he has to develop himself spiritual education especially unfortunately in our uh, uh, you know education system we don't have a spiritual education we don't even talk about soul we don't even talk about god we only uh, secular country right we we it is very bad if you talk about god okay so and on the name of secularism we should not kill the traditions we should not kill the rituals we should not kill the religion right so religion is not a kind of a, you know it's all how you live religion is something that defines how we live if that is not you know taught to the people and if they directly start grahastha then what happens they don't know how to live they don't know how to take care of their family they don't know how to you know bring up their kids they don't know what is a grahastha as a husband they don't know responsibilities as a husband they don't know responsibilities as a son they don't know responsibilities as a father okay so brahmacharya ashrama will help us knowing all these things once you are educated then you will perform your activities so that you are not uh, you know keeping god away from your uh, you know day to day life so you will be connected with god and you will perform all your material activities otherwise uh, without god without thinking about god and without a spiritual activities in your life and if you continue doing the material activities like morning you get up you brush you, you have a bath take a breakfast go to office and work like a donkey till evening 8 o'clock and then uh, travel back to home and then again eat and then sleep and this is going to be a routine life where is god there is no god it means we are thinking we are grahasthas but we are not grahasthas a grahastha is a person who actually execute their day to day life day to day activities keeping krishna in the center if krishna is not in the center and you perform all these activities then you are not grahastha you are grahamedi we call them as grahamedis okay a grahamedi is like a animal animal also wants want it also wants eating meeting then defending sleeping these four activities even animal also has animal also eating animal also sleeping animal also mating and animal also defending these four activities every living entity has so what is special that we have we are also doing the same thing we are not doing anything different from an animal right so that's why uh, the human body is precious human body is uh, you know uh, you don't get a human body just like that if you get a human body then you should know the ultimate purpose of the human body if we live like an animal then that animal life will not help us get elevated spiritually the purpose of the body is lost and we give to hellish life then we get anim- animal bodies we we become animals in the next uh, life okay 
that's the that is also one uh, thing that uh, here it is mentioned then the, when the family traditions are destroyed completely then the people that the second reason he is telling uh, uh, is the second effect that he is telling because he kills everyone the second effect that he is telling is irreligion adharma okay adharma increases adharma increases becomes that means uh, false prestige false ego starts we think that we are the owners of everything false ego starts and i am the master and everybody else is a servant okay and uh, and for this only we strive right we we day to day life we all try to prove that you know everybody will try to do this at their level maybe in the family maybe in the outside maybe in the office maybe in the shops or everywhere wherever you go everybody thinks i am great i am great or i am the top most okay i am the top most but the fact is we are not uh, masters we are also servants because a master is someone who gets service from everybody but a person who is in a highest position in an office also is a servant in fact why because uh, uh, let let me say a, a father in the house is a elder one to, among all okay what is he doing everybody respect him right uh, wife respects kids respect uh, everybody respects then he can think i am the master and then everybody else is uh, you know respecting me and uh, they are all serving me we might be thinking but the fact is this is ignorance we actually a master is serving all the family members right so a person who is not having a family he is serving his own senses his own senses he is serving like he wants a, a beautiful sceneries he wants a beautiful girl he wants a beautiful smell he wants a, a tasty food he wants enjoyment everything he wants right these are all the sense enjoyments he is doing for that he will work hard maybe he is in a top position but he is serving his senses okay person who is a selfish serves his own senses a person looks that you know no me means i am not alone a me means all my family members okay that means he is having some extended you know me so he thinks that you know my wife is also part of me my kids are also part of me then he will start serving them also and a person who is little better than such a person oh, okay self he, we call them also selfish the, the people work for society some people work for societies okay as a leaders as a rulers they work for societies right and they think me means it's not only me and my family it's all about my society also but they are serving everybody even a politician is serving everybody even a ias officer is serving everybody everybody is serving everyone and thinking that i am a master and everybody is serving me it's a foolishness right so this is called false ego this false ego is also an illusion so if you don't have false ego then you will realize what you are i am not a master i am a servant of god okay my job is to serve you know jagannath if i don't serve jagannath i'm lost this is my job for that i came here okay this is a real ego if we lose this ego that means forgetting our relationship with krishna forgetting what we are and thinking that i am the master is a false ego and we enter into this trap and then we 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 fall down in this material world and also and we are attracted to many sense objects we are attracted to many sense objects and we and for our survival and for achieving what we want we start lying this is all irreligion we start lying everywhere we lie right in office we lie in profession we will lie in personal life we will lie where we don't lie right everybody those who wants everything they will start lying okay then uh then every every the people start cheating others okay then people uh, why the di- divorces and all uh in the marriage life you know, if you see in the earlier life olden life have we have never seen the divorce uh, concept at all in the you know ancient uh, you know uh, vedic culture okay there is no divorce once married is married there is no divorce okay but now immediately after marriage in within month within two months also divorces 
because they don't know religion they don't see they don't have a common platform that is the problem people think on their own platforms okay for everybody say for me something is good for you something else is good for me something is bad for you something else is bad this is the problem there is no common thinking there is no common platform for people to live that is the reason people are not you know staying together that is uh, that has a problem okay and the relations are not valued okay we don't value any relation we we use relations in fact we use relations if any relation which is not helping me is a waste if any relation which is not supporting me is waste we we cut it with them we don't talk to them even in friendship also even or maybe in the family relations also you how many of the family members are not talking to us it happens right we fight with them we tell them no you 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 did a uh, wrong activity you you did not uh, you know favor me so i don't call you for any functions that happen in my house so this is from please sit here let me sit here okay this, this continues why the uh, why the differences of opinions in the family why people fight within family brother and brothers fight and uh, son and father fight why because they don't as long as the father is giving all the properties assets then he is good the moment when a person realizes that you know my father is not going to give me anything and till he live i have to serve him then what he will do he will stop serving him and he will put him in the you know old age homes that's what happens this is all irreligion this are, this this develops when elders are there to tell us our responsibility towards our father towards our mother towards our brother then we realize we understand okay see that, that is the benefit in the uh, joint families right earlier there used to be joint families now all micro families right no um, wife stays in one house and husband say, stays in another house and they meet once in a week or once in a month okay because if we stay together we will fight we will stay apart <laughs> and then we will meet only when there is a need okay this kind of culture has started now okay so this is the reason our traditions are destroyed completely destroyed we don't know tradition we are not following any tradition for that matter we are not following we don't know what is right that's that is the reason see uh, yesterday when uh, we went uh, to hanuman temple saturday okay this month is kartika month auspicious month okay damodara month and uh, uh, why we went there is to tell the glory of kartik is to give them the mercy of krishna we don't get any benefit out of it in in fact we are spending money from our pocket you know getting a ghee lamp and we are spending time we are spending money we are going and putting in all the efforts but some people look at us and say that what benefit you get by giving me the ghee lamp and offering to krishna what benefit you get and some people did not even you know take the lamp to offer to krishna 20 30% people they say they are not even taking the lamp to offer to krishna because they don't know values of the tra traditional that is the reason we went right we, why we went we went to give some mercy to them so that if not today tomorrow they will know the glories of krishna they will know the glory of kartika month okay otherwise you know sinful society it becomes a sinful society we want to avoid that as a devotee of krishna as a service to krishna we have to ensure that the society is you know pious society they are not sinful people okay we want to ensure that so for that at least if they offer a ghee lamp once to the lord damodara right all their sins will go at least god will give some good thoughts to them at least god will make them human beings okay this is the purpose we go and then you know help them this is helping them people those who don't understand that we are helping them they look at us like a beggars they look at us like you know these guys have no work that's why they came here okay we all are busy in our profession 
we all are working we are coming here in a free time to serve krishna who is free nobody is free everybody is working people who say we don't so many people come to center on sunday we are given cards come to center on sunday at least in your day 24 hours you are not spending for god you are not spending for yourself at least on sunday one hour you spend for yourself spend for god so so nobody nobody understand the importance of that nobody understand the purpose of life nobody understand the importance of these all can be possible if somebody teach if somebody teach problem is from the childhood we are keeping our children in the hostels and they don't know human values they don't know uh, traditions they don't know father and mother if they don't have access to the kill- children what will they teach they don't teach anything right they don't they will lose the values that's the that's the problem that arjuna is talking we might be thinking first chapter is nothing in the bhagavad gita first chapter is all about uh, you know arjuna's uh, saroness and arjuna is crying arjuna is weeping arjuna is uh, thinking uh, he is doing seen all these things where krishna has spoken krishna has not even spoken one verse in first chapter so first chapter we will skip we will think but first chapter is very very important okay from what arjuna is speaking we should understand how we should live arjuna has said a lot of philosophy in this uh, first chapter he talked about so many things in religion who knows nobody knows about in religion okay but and all this black market and all what is this gambling all these things it's all because we think earning money is the ultimate objective of our life that's why we start black market we 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 sell the uh, things in the black and we trade uh, you know gambling we do all these things we do is is only because uh, earning money irreligiously is also right okay so there is no dharma that is happening and what happens in the next when the irreligion increases women are polluted women are polluted because if um, everybody is uh, doing everything that they want women also thinks i can also do everything i want but the problem is here if the woman is polluted the whole pa- family will be polluted if woman is chaste woman then the whole family will be chaste everybody the religion is you know protected if the woman is chaste if the woman is polluted the family lost family is gone that's why it is very important for a woman to be chaste a chaste woman only can you know keep the family together otherwise what will happen they will uh, the polluted women right uh, that's why in this uh, verse he talks about uh, kulastri so we have to respect kulastri kulastri means a chaste lady a kulastri and kulata stri is different kula is different kulata is different kulata is kulata is unchaste she is not pure she is contaminated okay uh, that's why why uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, kaurava family is you know completely vanished after the why did krishna punish the whole kaurava family because they did not respect kulastri a chaste woman draupadi was disrobed in the assembly of kuru in the assembly of astinapur right the kulastri was you know disrespected and a mother like a person for duryodhana and dushyasana draupadi was a kind of mother because his elder brother's wife she is supposed to be respected like a mother but what did they do they tried to de- disrobe the sari of uh, draupadi that's why what happened to them that's why respecting women is very very important in this society especially a kulastri a chaste woman and fa- in the family if the woman is not respected the family will be destroyed the family will be destroyed so that is also one lesson that we can get from here and uh, um and in fact um the influence of the uh, mother on the children is 
you know very high compared to anybody else because children are very close to mother if mother is polluted what happens to children what happens to children children gone they are gone you see the difference between uh, pandavas and kauravas pandavas are pious but kauravas are sinful people and pandavas follow all the religions but kauravas don't pandavas respect women kauravas don't why what is the difference in fact pandavas don't have father kauravas have father and mother and they have kingdom also pandavas don't have from the birth they are outside okay the only difference is kunti devi kunti being a mother she has fulfilled her responsibilities 100% but whereas gandhari she folded her uh, you know she 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 blindfolded she closed her eyes she does not know what her her son is doing <laughs> if a father and mother does not look at a children what they are doing whether they are doing right or they are doing wrong if a father and mother don't monitor children become like kauravas that's why it is very... see in the name of chastity gandhari closed her eyes because she want to she does not want to see because her husband does not see but what happened to the whole family because of that it's not that you know if my husband does not see i should also not see that is not the chastity chastity means you know taking care of the family also is one of the responsibility of the uh, mother and the mother's responsibility she could not fulfill because she is closing the eyes that's why um, duryodhana has become like a rowdy right but whereas uh, what happened to pandu pandu passed away when the children were very small they don't even recognize uh, their father such a small age uh, you know uh, pandu king passed away then as a tradition uh, wife also has to uh, die in the uh fire okay in the same fire uh huh? in the same agni that is called sati sahagamana right sati she has to uh, she has she also should die but kunti what did she say i don't want to die because uh, there are my children's dependent on me i have to take care of them right what happens if she also think that you know this is a tradition and i if my fa- my my husband is a great devotee and if i also die i will also reach a destination where my husband reaches without any effort the liberation comes the salvation comes if i also die i will go to vaikuntha if she thinks and then she 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 die when her husband dies then what happens what will happen to children children will become like uh, kauravas right she did not do that she mentioned that you know i have to take care of my children that's why um that's why Uh, that's why that's why kauravas uh, you know difference between the kauravas and pandavas the because that irrelevance is because the responsibilities of the mother are not fulfilled in a way it is supposed to be fulfilled okay then if the uh, if the women are polluted then the next consequences what will be the next consequences unwanted progeny starts unwanted childrens right varna sankara starts there is no varna there is no brahmana there is no kshatriya there is no vaishya there is no shudra who is born to whom we don't know because woman is con- you know polluted that's why the the uh, the woman's purity is not only in the actions it is also in the thoughts in the thinking okay so the unwanted progeny comes uh if the garbharana sanskara is not done and unwanted progeny starts if mentally we are not thinking right okay example uh i hope everybody is aware of who is diti diti is a mother of all asuras right and aditi is a mother of all devatas right um diti is a wife wife of uh, kashyapa prajapati kashyapa muni okay then kashyapa muni went for uh, you know tapasya for so many years but diti was missing 
the physical contact with uh, uh, Kashyapa. She has not done any mistake. She wanted a physical relationship with her husband only. But Kashyapa said, the moment when Kashyapa came, Diti said, uh, I want to be with you physically intimated. Then Kashyapa said, this is not the right time. This is the day time. It's the evening time. It's not the right time. There are some, uh, you know, uh, for every action, every activity that we should do, there is a right time that we should think of. Especially, uh, act like this. Okay. Then Diti was forcing. Then uh, Kashyapa could not avoid. When Kashyapa wanted to go away from there, Diti pulled his, uh, you know, shirt. Pulled his, uh, you know, uh, dhoti. Don't go. So, so, see the intention of Diti. See the thinking attitude of Diti. Because of such attitude of a woman, she has given birth to two unwanted children. Who are they? Hiranya Kashipu and Hiranyaksha. These are the demons. When they were in the birth, in the womb of the Diti itself, the whole world, you know, uh, shaken. They have, they have not come out from the womb, but still, even Devatas, even the all three lok, all, all, all lokas have, uh, you know, scared of, uh, we, you know, scared of thinking about these uh, um, Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. This is the unwanted children. That means the woman's nature should be pure. If woman is not pure, the children are going to be contaminated. Children will become unwanted children. That's why uh, Krishna has all the way has to take a you know incarnation as uh, Narasimha Bhagwan and kill uh, Hiranyakashipu because he is not wanted because nobody is happy with Hiranyakashipu nobody is happy with Hiranyaksha that is the uh, unwanted uh, uh, children then uh, and also we get hellish lives that is another uh, effect of uh, you know losing the traditions in the family is uh, Hellish life. The person who is causing this losing of traditions is also going to hell, and a person, uh, the whole family goes to hell. Okay. Actually, I will tell you a small story here. Uh, actually, there was a place called uh, uh, Rangpatar. The place name is Rangpatar. And that place was on the bank of Tungabhadra River. Okay. Uh, this, this is there in the Padma Purana. Here in the Padma Purana, the glory of Srimad Bhagavatam was explained. In that, this story was given. So I picked that story. In the Tungabhadra River bank, there was a village called Rangapattar. In the Rangapattar village, there was a person called uh, Atma Deva. And this Atma Deva was a pious guy. He is like a Brahman. He reads scriptures. He lives uh, religiously. No irreligion. Then what happened? He has a wife and her name is Dungli. And that wife was a liar always. She is not a chaste lady. Like how we thought, right? If the woman is not chaste, what happens? That is the concept here. Although uh, this Brahman is good, but his wife was uh, contaminated. She is not doing any wrong things, but uh, her thoughts are not good. And she, she has a habit of lying always. Okay. Then what happened? These two were not having kids. They don't, they, they don't have kids. Then uh, Atmadev was worried. He is thinking, uh, you know, if I don't have a son, I will not be delivered. And if I don't have a son, my forefathers will not be delivered. And any activity that I perform is of not is not going to be pious if we don't have kings, as if we don't have sons. That is a tradition, right? It is very important that we have at least one son or one daughter. Otherwise, what happens? Um, any worship that you do will not give you that benefit. Uh, that is as per the scriptures. So then he he thought uh, they waited for so many years to get a baby. They have not got the baby, and then he was frustrated. Then he left the house and then he went to the forest uh, to do some tapasya or some, to get some you know benediction to so that he will get a baby. 
and then he went and met a sadhu and that sadhu said why are you worried about not having babies there are so many people who have a babies and they are suffering and the babies are the reason for them to suffer okay so don't worry about not having a baby go and uh, you know be happy with your wife and then uh, you know be you know uh, doing a devotional service and live like a pious guy okay or live like a devotee he said then he said no 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 if i don't have a baby and it's nothing uh, i'm 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 uh, Fact that Swami has given few examples also. Chitraket Maharaj, he was not having a baby. Chitraket Maharaj was not having a baby, but he has done so many yajnas uh, to get a baby. At the end, because of one yajna, he gets a baby. And before getting a baby, uh, the Angira Muni was uh, uh, telling him, "If you get a baby, baby will become a reason for you to cry." Okay, don't get a baby, he said. He said, "Still, not having a baby is worse. If I have a baby and cry also is fine," he said. okay then he got a baby then he cried after that because the baby just born baby while he was not even uh, you know learn to walk he he passed away the baby lost, he lost the baby okay and the baby has become a reason for his lamentation later then chitraket maharaj realized i did a wrong thing of getting a baby and then i and there are so many other uh, examples angaraj angaraj uh, was uh, one uh, king Who is not having baby? After doing so many yajnas, he got one uh, uh, son. What is his? Uh, um, Venu Maharaj. Angaraj's son is Venu. Okay, Venu is a sinful guy. Okay, Venu is sinful guy because Venu's mother was daughter of Mrityu Deva. Venu's mother was daughter of Mrityu Deva. So their thoughts are bad. There are evil thoughts. because of having such evil thoughts uh, venu raju was born and venu is a irreligious person he kills all brahmanas he kills all yajnas he he has uh, because of him the whole family is lost whole at the end what happens brahmanas comes and kill the venu brahmanas responsibility is take care of the society also if the society is not ruled by the kings properly brahmanas even go and kill the kings that is the responsibility of brahmanas it's not that you know brahmanas don't have energy brahmanas don't have a power brahmanas have a power but they will use it when the kings are destroying kings are the reason for the sinful and this thing so that way what happened he has given all these examples so so son becomes a reason for you to lament so don't worry about not having son but he said no 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 i want to have a son then uh, uh, that sadhu has given one fruit and he said go and feed this fruit to your wife then your wife will conceive and she will become a pregnant and then that uh, atmadev went to that son uh, sorry that wife and then he has given that uh, fruit to wife then wife uh, think that who will take the pain of uh, you know giving a birth to a baby uh, it is a it is almost equal to dying uh, and uh, once after he born also i have to feed him milk i have to feed him food i have to take care of him my beauty will go my uh, you know uh, my looks everything will go so that's why i don't want to get a baby okay so then what she did she she has given that fruit to the cow she has given that fruit to the cow and she told um, her wife her husband that i ate because she is a liar already we know <laughs> she is such a liar she has already told to her husband that you know uh, i ate then after some time uh, cow has given a baby okay and that 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 uh, baby name is gokarna that baby name is gokarna he looks like a human being but his his ears are like uh, cow ears that's why his name is gokarna okay so he is a pious guy he is a very nice guy and uh, and uh, later she realized that you know and she was not believing that eating this fruit will give the baby but she has seen the cow has given the baby then she realized that you know my husband might ask have you ate or not why you are not conceived then she, what she did she paid some money to his her uh, sister her uh, long relation some sister 
and she said i will give you money you give your son to me so she adopted the son of her sister okay and that her, that sister some that sister or somebody who is a prostitute or somebody who does not want to take care of his baby because some prostitutes right they they get they give a birth and they will throw the children out such a baby she adopted and that fellow has become a cruel fellow and he is doing all mischief activities and he is eating all the food all the money he is stealing and he is doing all wrong activities when he grow and then he has taken all the money he is hitting uh, his father he is hitting his mother such a bad father but such a bad son because the mother is like that and the mother is like that so son also become like that then what he did uh, this atmadev atmadev does not want to live in this house because why did i get such a person as a boon okay i could have not even gone to that sadhu i could have listened to sadhu even if i go i should have not uh, you know given her uh, fruit now i got such a bad son so i want to go leave the house and go home i uh, go to forest then he went to forest okay he went to forest later whatever the property that is left whatever the money that is left whatever the food that is left uh, this uh, this son uh, uh, his name is uh, dunduli okay his name is dunduli uh, no 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 his name is not dunduli is her uh, husband a uh, wife name right uh, his name is uh, um, dundkari dundkari his name is dundkari okay this dundkari what he was doing he 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 was he was uh, not taking care of his mother obviously because he is he is a irreligious person so then mother one day he she suicided mother one day she suicided then the whole house is his own now he brought some uh, you know uh, five girls uh, and he kept the girls in the home and he is enjoying and uh, one day what happened they gave lot of drink to this guy and those five ladies they killed him and they have taken the whole assets or whatever the money that he has they have taken and went and this guy has become a pisachi this guy has become a pisachi later what happened uh, gokarna who was a pious guy uh, he was not jelling in this family so he thought uh, it is not a right place for him to live and then he went to some places and uh, in the forest or in the sadhu he became a sadhu and he went later he came to know that his brother, brother has become a pisachi then all the way he came and uh, seven days bhagavatam he read in that house then that guy was delivered the pisachi body has gone and he has got some other body or he got liberated or something happened so this is what happened even uh, his father everybody also were pious guys they were liberated but this mother again gone to narak okay so this is what happened so in this way we can see the uh, the the women should be pure in thinking also women should be pure with body also women should be pure in every way if the woman is not chaste in this way then the whole family is you know becomes destroyed like this okay that's why i i try to bring that story so so in this way we have seen and then um, uh then pinda pindas are stopped offering the water and offering the food to the ancestors is very important every year we do that on the death day or some day we do that right pinda pradhana we do that if we if this is a really if this is a religion that we have to do if we stop that then nobody will be delivered okay so in this way uh unwanted progeny causes the destruction in the family so so the the center the the reason is the woman and women should be as pure as possible otherwise the whole uh, family will be uh, you know contaminated so in this uh, in this current society even if you want to be pure even if you try uh, you know to be pure it is not possible because of uh, competitive world because you know if you don't do politics in office you cannot survive if you don't you know lie you cannot do business okay if you don't 
how will we be delivered how will we be not getting the sins by be see we are all irreligious in a way if we don't understand how we have to do business if we don't understand how we have to work in our professional life then at the end we are all doing sinful activities right so going to office and working and playing some politics if you don't play politics for sure i'm telling in the office you cannot survive even if a person is telling that i am not playing politics is also playing politics it may not be to the extent of uh, you know people who are playing politics you know but a minimal you know diplomacy and politics are required for us to survive in this society when we are our society is like that and we are living like that if we don't lie in a business we will say in a business also you buy from me it is a better quality it is a that this but we are not selling anything greater than what others are selling but we say if you go there and buy them then that will not uh, you know uh, uh, last for uh, even two months or three months if you buy from me i will give you warranty of one year all these things businessmen will tell right he will say mine is original theirs are duplicate these are all lie these are all lie it's not true fact is the product is same everywhere but we make them to buy from us also by saying some lies this is all the earning that we get by incurring sins okay how do we get out of these sins is something that's why if you see oh krishna oh janardana oh see uh, arjuna knows that he is all committing sins but every verse if you see arjuna is calling uh, calling out with the name of krishna okay the name of krishna is such a pure that you know if you chant the name of krishna all your sins will go all your sins will go all your sins that's why it is very important there is no difference between the name of krishna and krishna a original krishna there is no difference shabda brahma the form of sound the sound form krishna has appeared in the na- in the name of krishna okay that's why the holy name will you know remove all our sins that's why we chant every day right we chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare if you can chant this name at least one round or not eight times if you can chant start chanting this will help us you know free from all the sins and whatever activities that you are doing become spiritual whatever activities material activities whatever thoughts that everything will be purified and we become you know sinless okay so this is the Uh, lesson for today from the concept so family traditions are very very important that's what we learn so first chapter is also important we all are learning a lot of things so i with this i request all of you to chant at home uh, hare krishna mahamantra so that will help us okay thank you very much hare krishna vancha kalpata rupya sya krupa sindhu bhayavacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namo